Hey everybody, Dave here, and thanks so much for joining us for another video. You know, I've been thinking about how I might put together a board that I could measure my fish with that doesn't cost much money at all, it doesn't rot, and I think I found the perfect one. It's super cheap and it's easy to build. Stick around and I'll show you just how I put it together. So you're only going to need a few things for this build. You'll need a tape measure, a sharpie, a piece of pool noodle, I make mine about 12 inches, 36 inch piece of power cord or whatever type of cord you have, and I'm using 4 inch PVC, schedule 40. I want it heavier because I don't want it to break if I'm out fishing in the colder weather. And um, you know, you could go down as far as 3 inch and still fit this tape measure on, and you don't even have to use this tape measure, I'll show you how to do that as well where you can mark off your own board. And the other, other thing you're going to need is a drill or a saw of some type and a Fossner bit. And I'll show you what that's like in a little bit. Okay, so what I'm going to do to get started is I'm going to take this pipe and I'm going to measure out 48 inches and put a mark, which I've already done here. Uh, my final board is going to be 40 inches. And um, I want it big for striper fishing. If you want yours smaller, you can certainly do that. Or you can make different lengths, uh, which you can do as well. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. But I want a little bit extra. I want an additional 8 inches, and I'll show you why that, that is in a minute. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this off um, on this mark, and I'm just going to use a circular saw and spin it around. Okay, the next step is to mark out this pipe so when I cut it, I get three fairly equal pieces. And so I just eyeball this to create like a triangle, as you can see here. So when I cut it, they'll be approximately the same in, in the dish radius here. Now, you can cut this with a circular saw, a jigsaw, a Dremel tool, whatever it is you have. I just happen to have a table saw here, and I'm going to rip this down the pipe lengthways to uh, make three different cuts on it and I'll have three separate boards. So let me do that and I'll show you how that works. So I have these marks drawn out and I want them facing towards me. So when I send it down, I want them facing towards me so I can see where they are. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take each mark and I'm going to face it exactly down at six o'clock before I start the feed into the table saw. The fence, I have already set two and a quarter inches uh, from the center of the blade to the fence because I know the pipe outside to outside is four and a half inches and so half of that is two and a quarter. That way I can leave the fence right against this edge, keep the mark down at six o'clock and run it through. I should have a very straight line and then I'll flip and do the each, each mark on here and have three fairly equal pieces. If you don't have a table saw like this, what you can do is Take and mark this, put a straight edge on top, and mark it and cut it from the outside with either a circular saw, table saw, a Dremel tool, whatever it is you have. And you might have to do some sanding afterwards, uh, but the table saw should be the best way to go. So that's what I'm going to use. Okay, I brought the blade up about, only about a half inch. For safety's sake, I've got my eye protection on. And now I'll come all the way back and flip it over and run it down through. Okay, now we'll do the next one. So 
So as you can see, now I've got three beautiful pieces and these are very smooth from the table saw. So now we'll move on to our next step. We're going to put our ends on for our fish to bump against so we get an accurate measurement. We're going to jump over onto the drill press and I'll show you how to do that. So now that I have these pipes cut into a dish shaped trough, what I did is I measured down from the top here four inches. And on the bigger pipe and the four inch, I would do four inches, smaller pipe three and a half. And then I placed a little mark right here. I placed one on this side and one on this side. And now what I'm going to do when I use the Foster bit, I'm going to come in about a quarter of an inch where that mark is and put the point of the Foster bit there. I'm using an inch and a quarter bit as opposed to a one inch bit because this pipe is a little bigger. And so uh, I'm going to put in the drill press and drill them out and you can see how it looks and when I'm done. So this is what it looks like as soon as it comes out of the drill press. Now as you can see there's some burrs on here and such. I'm just going to use a sanding drum on a drill to clean that up with, but you can use some sandpaper by hand, file, whatever it is you'd like. So now what I'm going to use is a heat gun. Uh, you can use a torch on this but you'll have a tendency to burn the pipe. The heat gun tends to put a lower heat on it, more, more distributed, and it doesn't burn the pipe and allows it to bend real easy. I'm going to leave this curved part. I'm not going to flatten this out. I really think it helps in the end, and I'll show you why. So let's heat this up in, in this area right here, both sides, and then I'm going to bend this up. I have this on high right now. I keep it about four or five inches away. Okay, once that's warm enough, <clears throat> I just need to take it and bend it up nice like that. I'll overbend it slightly and let it come back. And heat up that backside a little bit. There we go. Now you got to let that cool a little bit. As you can see, I overbent it slightly. I can always heat it up and bring it back. It's starting to get stiff now. Okay, now I'm getting at a point where I can form it exactly at 90 degrees. And that's it right there. What I like about this is it automatically funnels the fish is his mouth right down to the end of the board here. The reason you need to do the reliefs like this is so that you could see so I could bend it up. What I did was I went ahead and purchased this Rapala stick on fish tape. You can get this on Amazon. It's about $3.99. I'll put a link in the description below. This just makes it real easy for four bucks. It's very accurate and uh, makes it really dress up the board. But if you didn't want to do that, you could certainly just use a tape measure, place little hash marks, and write the number right next to it, whatever that measurement is in inches, half inches, whatever you want to do. Uh, so that's another way you can get around this and make the board even cheaper. As far as the piping goes, you can, you know, you don't have to buy that at like Home Depot. If you're driving around and you see them building a house and the plumber's there, there's a lot of time he has scrap left over. He can give you a piece of four inch pipe, that's whatever it is you need, and you know, just throw him a couple of bucks. 
uh, you know, I mean, and, and you'll have uh, all the, the stuff you need to uh, create your own bumper boards. So let's go ahead and I'm going to show you exactly how I put this on. And then there's one other feature I add to it that I thought about that is going to save the day in the end. So make sure you stick around and watch that. So before I even attempt to put the tape on, the first thing I'm going to do, because this end over here is curved a little bit, is I want to put the tape up about an inch or so, and I'm going to come to back, and I'm going to place a mark right at the four inch mark, right there. Just like that. And now what I'm going to do is line the four inch up with the tape measure, and then I'll know it's where it should be on the trough. So I've made that four inch mark right here. Now what I'm I did was I went ahead and I took the tape and I cut it off so it starts at the half inch mark. That way it'll eliminate any curves that are in here and the tape will be start back a little bit on the flatter part and then I will line it up with the four, four inch mark here on the four inch mark there and then I know that it will be correct so I've taken the tape and I've laid it out in here and I've lined up the four inch with my mark right here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to push down on this, center it where I want. Right there looks good. And I'm taking a piece of tape and just putting it in here like this. And the reason for that is I don't want this to move. I don't want it to slide one way or the other, and this is going to make it easier for me to attach. One thing I'd encourage you to do is make sure you use some isopropyl alcohol on a clean rag and wipe it down and let it dry before you put the tape on. That will allow everything to stick a whole lot better. So now that I have this tape down, what I've done is I pulled the backing off. Now it's just a matter of putting this down, make sure the four lines up and centering it on the board. You start in the middle here. Push any air bubbles out, just like this. And as you get this first port part seated down, then it'll be a whole lot easier for the rest of it. Now I can take this blue tape off. There we go. And I can work my way all the way down to the end. Okay, now that, that tape is on, that's what it looks like. Now I've got one more final step to make this super effective. So make sure when you put the tape on and you're all done that you measure it to make sure that it's where it should be. You know that 16 is on 16, 30 is on 30 and so forth. Uh, if it's off then pull the tape back up and stretch on it, do whatever you need to do, adjust it and lay it back down because you want that accurate. And this ruler, um, this Rapala ruler, seems pretty accurate, but you have to make sure that it's pulled completely tight. So just one tip to think about while you're doing this. So the final thing that I came up with to make this even better was the fact that, you know, you go to all this work to put this together. What happens if you drop it overboard? By the time you get the boat turned around or the kayak turned around, it's gone. So that's what the purpose of the pool noodle is. So let me show you how I rig it up so that if I do drop it overboard by accident that I can go back and have plenty of time to scoop it back up again. The other thing is it also gives me a place to attach it to my kayak or my boat. So let me show you that final step and then we'll be done. So I've taken and I made sure that my board is 40 inches. I cut it off at 40 inches, came in one inch, put a mark there and now I'm going to take a 3-8 drill bit like this one and I'm going to drill this all the way through. Now I'm going to take my 36 inches of paracord 
and I'm going to tie a loop in the end. I'll put the two ends together and I'll just do an overhand knot and that'll create one complete loop like that. I'll pull that down, get that nice and tight. All right. Now, what I want to do is I want to put this through this hole just like this. Take the other end, pull it through like that. Now I'll grab my pool noodle and I'll feed this through the end. You can make this longer or shorter if you want. I felt this was ideal. So now that I've slid the knot through the pool noodle, I just want to take a carabiner like this. This is an aluminum one. You can get these cheap. You can get these at the dollar store, two for a buck, I think they are. And I'm just going to clip this through like that. This one has a lock on it, so I'll lock it up. And when I want to store it, I just lay it on the trough like that. All done. Now if I drop this in the water, this is going to hold this up so I can circle around and pick it up on the way back. Hey, I hope that build was helpful to you. I hope that you'll have the opportunity to make one of those yourself. And I hope especially that you'll have the opportunity to get a lot of use out of it this coming season. Let me just share with you this thought for the week as I end this video. And that's this. The reason that we use a tape measuring system when we fish is so that we know whether the fish is legal or not to keep within the law. You know, that's not too unlike our relationship with God. Someday, you and I will stand before God and He will judge us on the things we do. He will judge us on who we are and He will judge us especially on our relationship and what we've done with His Son, Jesus Christ. You know, the thing of it is, God doesn't want to judge us harshly. He gives us every opportunity and every avenue to know Him in a deep and a personal way. He loved you and He loved me so much that He sent Jesus Christ so that He would pay the penalty for our sins. It says this in the Bible. It says, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ. You see, God gave us Jesus as a gift so that he would take on our sins and so that God would then look at us without sin. But it requires us to do one thing, and that is to receive that gift that he gave, which is Jesus Christ. If you're not sure how to have a relationship with God, how to receive that gift, how to take the next step in moving that way, because someday, again, we'll all be judged. And that's not to be, you know, scare you or anything like that, because God's given you and I a way out. But the thing of it is, it's what we do with Jesus Christ that's important. And if you, again, if you're not sure how to make that commitment to God and how to work in that relationship, how to develop that relationship, how to accept Christ as your Savior, then you know what? I'd really encourage you to click on my book in the description below. It's called Growing Deep. It's free. It doesn't require your email or anything else for me to capture. And you can start reading on it right away. But in it, I share with you a little bit about my life. I share with you the scriptures that are true. And the fact of it is how you can follow Christ just by coming to him with a sorrowful heart and by placing your faith in him. And so that book is free and available to you, as well as all my books down below in the description. Check them out when you get a chance. And guys, thanks so much again for hanging out with us today. If you like our content, I'd really encourage you to take the time to subscribe to our channel. And, you know, make sure if you do, you hit that notification bell and select all so you'll be up to date on all the videos as soon as they come out. You know, let me just leave you with this one major thing, and that is this, that God loves you more than you could ever know. So until next time, guys. Remember to get outdoors, and God bless you.